Hello, Zero K fans! This is Shadow Fury CC3 with an exhibition match between. Oh, it's gonna be quiet today. With an exhibition match between Orphelius and Covert Magic. Well, starting off the exhibition match stream with a match between these two. Newer players, or at least players I haven't seen very much of. Not newer players, actually. They are not new, but I have not actually seen them play here. I haven't actually showcased them at all. So it'll be interesting to see what they do, what they come up with, and how they play. And. Yes, that's all you can really say for that, so let us begin. Ophelius starting out... Oh, sorry, Cover Magic, rather. Starting out in the southwest corner of the map. Not sure what he's going for yet. But Ophelius has gone for Shieldbot Factory. So it's going to be a very quick Shieldbot. Early Bandit for Scout, and no apparent raiding right now. While Covert Magic going for Light Vehicle Factory, and that is going to be... Darts. Darts and Scorches are going for a bit more of a raiding-oriented opening. While Ophelius... Not sure what he's doing here. He should be building more... Okay, there we go. He should be building a worker. Be building some convicts. That is going to be necessary. But that's also going to be a little bit risky. There are a couple... The darts coming in aren't going to be the biggest deal. They are just going to get picked off. The bandit's going to take care of one of them. And the commander should take care of the other one. While Cobra Magic is getting onto those Scorchers. Actually, he's rushing out those Scorchers as best he can. He doesn't have the metal to do it with. He's trying to push 15 build power into that factory. But has he's out of metal. He is just... He only has 7 metal income, so it's not going to work out very quickly. And the bandit coming in for Ophelius is going to be able to deal a bit of damage. This Lotus actually isn't going to be up in time. The Scorcher will be, but the Lotus won't. And the Scorcher actually not able to get to that bandit in time. Bandit gets rid of that laser tower and not gets rid of the... It's not going to get rid of the mason. It's going to go around the mason and have to deal with this Scorcher. It looks like it's not going to work, though. That Scorcher managing to get through there. Winning that little skirmish, but at the same time, Orphelius does have bandits coming in. And Cobra Magic has not gone to rebuild that laser tower. So right now, Orphelius could go in with more bandits and deal some meaningful damage. He's probably not going to do so. He's probably going to just stay in his base. Set up a defensive line from the looks of it. But we'll we'll see. I mean, he might actually go for something a bit more meaningful. However, with that first attack off, that is certainly... Certainly showing off that Ophelius is, at least in this particular game, confident enough to be aggressive. He, Given the elo differences, he might just be figuring that he might as well be aggressive and deal with it. Though, admittedly, if you are better than your opponent, it's usually a better idea to go, in a lot of RTS games at least, 0k is pretty much no exception. Go for more of a late game build. Go for... I mean, 0k is a bit of an exception because macro is not that hard, but... Yeah, go for late game. Go for lots of units. Go for when you have your resources and you have a large army, and you can build your army faster, you can control a larger army better because you have more experience. However, 0k being the way it is, is actually, that isn't quite so true. Because you do have micromanagement of units, which, if you're skilled at it, actually makes a huge difference, and makes a bigger difference early on than it does later in the game. So the aggression is not unwarranted. However, that being said, Orphelius is still probably in a better position to play for the late game. He is, however... Doing exactly that from the looks of it. Corporate Magic over his counterattack with the Scorchers. That did not work out well at all. The Scorchers slowing down. Getting slowed down by the Outlaw really did not do them any favors. Now, at the same time, there are more Scorchers coming in. Scorchers and Slashers. Cobra Magic switching to a more of a defensive posture. Getting the Slashers up. Does have another Lotus up. So he's not open for another attack. But like I said, Ophelius. He is doing exactly what I'm mentioning about. Or at least pretty much exactly what I'm mentioning about. Not being too aggressive. Just playing for the later game. Getting your resources up. Safely building up. I mean, you can defend against whatever they attack with, given that you probably have better micro. And one of the scout darts goes away, and Covert Magic starts to set up a bit of a... Well, he's bidding him a defensive line. That's what he's getting. He's not going for a counterattack quite yet. The players are both just kind of setting up their lines, setting up their sides, trying to take what they can. Orphelius is actually pushing out a bit more than Covert Magic is, which is something he can get away with. Given that he's won the last few skirmishes, and he has a bit of a unit advantage. Only 300 metal, but still, that's... That's a good couple bandits. That's good, actually, more than a couple. That's like five bandits. Each bandit's 80 metal. Yeah, that's about five bandits worth of advantage compared to this. The slashers will be a bit of a pain. The bandits are going to have to get through the scorchers. That's going to be problematic. So I don't think Orphelius wants to engage at this point. He is not switching over to thugs or to rogues. Rogues probably be a better option, but still, he's not switching over to that. And just, you know, comparison slasher compared to rogue. Range-wise, Slasher will win, so it's really a matter of making sure the Slashers move before you attack them. Slashers have 600 range to the Rogue's 530. Now, Orphelius retreating back a bit, just 
making sure not to lose too many units, that's, that is a good thing to do. You do not want to lose units unnecessarily. It's not a bad idea to keep an eye on what your opponent's up to, but given that Orphelius has radar coverage of the majority of the map, thanks to this radar over here, it's not a big deal. Covert Magic, on the other hand, only has radar coverage of a little less than half of the map, so he's considerably less well-informed, and Orphelius can really take advantage of that. Bit surprised he's not expanding to the northwest, though. He is starting to expand to the southeast, being really aggressive there, so Orphelius is just taking what he can. However, he is not going to be having any problems doing that. Getting rid of one of the Masons that Covert Magic had set up, and Covert Magic getting levelers, he's going to use that to break this line, because the Scorchers can sort of do it in large enough numbers, but the levelers... That is your anti-raider right there. Riot vehicles. Not called that for nothing. Levelers and slashers are coming up. And that is going to be a bit tricky to deal with. Over Ophelius is coming in with heat rays. Trying to beat Scorchers with their own game with heat rays. But it's not going to work out too easily. Ophelius does have... Well, actually a bit of an advantage by the fact that he's using heat rays. The one nice thing about that is... The Scorchers trying to get close to attack his commander and try to dive it out. Are going to be damaged more the closer they get. Because that, that's how heat rays work. So the commander is actually going to have an easier time defending against Scorchers than he would with, say, a Beam Laser or an LPB. That being said, that's not the concern. The Leveler is about to take out the commander. One more shot and the commander is going to go down. Orphelius loses his commander. Heat Ray Auto Repair, so that was just an aggressive commander, but that was also what he had to deal with this whole southeast side of the map. And now the Leveler is going to get rid of the radar. Going to probably get rid of the Metal Extractor. It will eventually. And now Thugs have been built up. Just checking the production. Orphelius has switched over to Thugs. Bandit Thug. Bandit going on a nice flank. That is a very beautiful flank there. Flanking around with the Thugs and going to be able to get rid of the Slashers as well. Cobra Magic's Commander is not going to last too long. It has to, has to move back, but it's it's going in, back into the Bandits. It does have a shotgun, but that's, even with that, the Thugs are just going to be able to deal with it. The Slashers have no use. The Levelers have great use, though. That is the one nice thing there, and the Bandits actually do get forced back. The Thugs get forced back as well due to the lack of support, and Covert Magic Commander survives, but gets pushed back a little bit. Lines are reduced to about here, and that's not going to be pretty for him. However, that's also not the biggest deal. I mean, he does have quite a bit of the map. He's The biggest deal is the fact that he is down in resources. He can take the southeast side. He hasn't gotten rid of this Metal Extractor yet, but he could take the southeast side pretty easily. Definitely take this Metal Extractor, and... Okay, the middle metal extractors are a little bit harder. Orphelius does have the center, and that is giving him an advantage. Covert Magic could just take the southeast and even it up for a little while at least. Now, the leveler is one thing to point out. Because of the splash damage, they can get under the shields pretty well. They'll hit the shield, but the damage will still go through it. So the thugs are going to have a bit of a hard time dealing with the levelers. Not the hardest time, but it's probably the best option right now that Covert Magic has. And one of the thugs does go down. The slashes, however, are not doing any good. They're just donating metal. Orphelius needs to take advantage of that. Get those reclaim fields. Cover Magic does pull away, though, and that cost of two slashers did not need to lose that. The thugs, however, are a great option. He's also getting Scorchers, which probably going to try to dive under the shields to use that. Not really sure that's the best option, but that could work. It's just, once you get enough thugs, the shields do overlap, and it, you can't easily dive under the shields anymore. The levelers really are the best option that Covert Magic has from the Vehicle Factory right now. Just that splash damage. That splash damage really does it. And the Thugs coming in. We do have Felons coming in. I was about to comment. I was expecting Felons, and Felons are forthcoming. Also, I want to point out that the Thug got a bit of a re... got a bit of a makeover recently. The model is nicer. Just want to point out Captain Benz' work, so... Nicely done, Captain Benz, making a very pretty Thug. Or at least a prettier Thug. It's a good looking thug, though. Hopefully he does the same for the rest of the Shieldbot Factory. I'm pretty sure he's working on it, but just wanted to point that out. It, it's it's nice to look at. I really appreciate that improvement. Anyway, Orphelius is going in for a flank. Getting rid of a Solar Collector, that's not going to do much good. Orphelius is a little bit low on energy. So, I mean, it, it's not a bad thing to have that Solar Collector, but at the same time, that Solar Collector was half acting as a wall. So really, that's distracted. Covert Magic gave Orphelius the time to go in and deal with that force. Now, at this point, Orphelius does have... Actually, a smaller army. By half. Once he gets the Felon up, that's going to make a major difference. But even then, 1100 health. Actually, the Levelers... Even against the, the Felon, it's actually going to be pretty powerful. Because the Felon's going to lose a lot of the shield energy. It's just going to drain most of the shield energy of the ball. I'm not sure that's going to work especially well. I would honestly think a better idea would be either to go for rogues or possibly try to trick them out with roaches. 
set up a few clever roaches around, so when he goes in, then just blow it up. I don't see thugs working out too well, because the splash damage, and then when the felon just comes in, it's going to drain all the shield energy to get rid of these levelers, and then the levelers are going to splash everything out, all the thugs are going to die, there were Scorchers coming in, and they're still being built, and Ravagers as well, and those are going to be able to get through the lack of shields with, well, no problems at all, because there's nothing there, there's nothing in the way. It's very easy to get through obstacles that don't exist, as a general rule in life. There are a few instances where non-existent things are problematic. And this is no exception. And we do have Covert Magic coming in here. The first Scorcher comes in, that doesn't do much good, but the Levelers are coming in, and that is going to be a major problem. Five Levelers, actually, yeah, five Levelers in a nice little circle here. One of them does go down, another one from behind to reinforce. And the Felon's coming in. This is where it's going to be a big deal, but Dominatrix is actually being constructed. It is under construction right now. Dominatrix is under construction. There's a flank with a Leveler and Ravager. Very nice flank here. That's going to be very useful. And now here comes the Felon draining all the ball shields. Here all the ball shields, but definitely heavily reducing its shields for not a whole lot of profit. That being said, the Levelers are still going down. They didn't fire quickly enough, and that's actually... Felon's worked out better than I expected. That being said, though, this flank is doing a pretty good amount of damage. Covert Magic does have a reclaim field at his disposal. He does have... Well, he has 20 metal income. He's been taking the center. He's been starting to overdrive a little bit, too. Not very much, but he has been taking the center at any rate. That's... Actually, not at all. Purple is... Purple is nothing. But that's beside the point. The point is, there is a nice raid going on here, and this thug... Well, the Ravager needs to actually tank the shots. That's the thing. The Ravager is definitely tougher than the leveler. If he can tank the shots, then the thugs will go down very quickly. The Felon, however, is right behind here... That being said, this is a nice flank. Now, Covert Magic not taking advantage of this to attack. He's not fully flanking. He had no units to really follow up with going from the southeast. If he had that, all of Corphelius' units were out of position. They were not defending. Covert Magic could have come in here and torn it apart. But I think Covert Magic is just trying to rebuild his army first. Getting a lot of Slash, getting all the Scorchers, and not quite sure why. Ravagers and Levelers would be the best thing to do to get rid of... Well, okay, to tank the damage from the Felon. And... Probably from there, I mean, Dominatrix is not a bad idea from the point of view of capture to win. Like, capture the Felon, and, well, that's that's huge. But that's 620, that's 620 health, that's not going to last very long. However, these Scorchers are coming for a nice raid, and that is something Orphelius does see. He's not responding to it yet, though, but he does have he does have radar along that area. He does know what's coming in. And Cobra Magic is... What is he about to do? He is going to just tear apart everything. Now, Orphelius not coming back here. Orphelius actually trying to get rid of what's going on here. He's trying to push his felons forward, get rid of the commander, while at the same time the raid going on in the back, doing a ton of damage. There are a bunch of convicts trying to repair everything, trying to save everything. Cobra Magic Commander is coming up, and that is... That commander's going to go down. However, in going down, it's going to drain a lot of the shields. There goes that commander. It's dead. But at the same time, these Scorchers... These Scorchers are dealing with everything. There are a few convicts coming out here, and that's about it. Bandits are coming out as well, but even then, Orphelius is taking a lot of damage. His forces are just along the bridge, but they are not quite here yet. And down goes the Shieldbot Factory. Down goes the Scorchers as well, but still, that is a huge blow. That being said, Orphelius does have a larger army. He could counterattack, but even then, Corporate Magic coming in with a second attack. Dominatrix is at reload. That is a big deal. The Dominatrix can't actually deal with these felons right now. It's going to basically go down to the thugs and felons anyway. There's too much shield to get rid of that. One of the thugs does get taken over, but that's that Dominatrix is about to die, and that's going to mean nothing for that. Second shield factory being built for Ophelius, and Covert Magic, well, losing the Dominatrix, it didn't do much good. Bit of a shame. Those things are quite expensive. That's 420 metal, and it basically amounted to nothing. Taking the Felon would have been great. Taking the Felon would have drained all that shield energy, and then that would be huge. But taking a Felon itself, that particular act, is extremely difficult to do as a Dominatrix. Unless you have a ton of support. And even then, if Orphelius is paying attention in Micro as well, he's just going to be able to target that Dominatrix and get rid of it. However, Covert Magic not going for Dominatrixes anymore. He's going purely for raiding. Trying to get more and more Scorchers just to get around the back and raid out Orphelius. Which isn't working especially well. He's starting to donate a lot of metal. These Scorchers and Shieldbot Factory, that's that's metal that Orphelius is taking back. And it's working out pretty well. Cobra Magic does have a better solid economy, a better stable economy. But he hasn't even expanded down to the southeast. Cobra Magic, sorry, Orphelius has had this metal extractor for the entire game. I mean, that is huge. And now he's coming on the west side of the map. That is going to be... Well, that's going to be a powerful attack if he goes through with it. He's He is slowly taking it. He's not 
being too aggressive. But yeah, neither player taking the corners. I am very surprised by that. That's pretty much free resources. You might as well just take them. I don't know why that's not been a priority for either player. Anyway, Scorchers are coming in here. Cobra Magic coming in with another set of Scorchers, and that is going to be... Well, another set of Scorchers. What can I say? That's that's about it. There's not much they can do at this point. Lotuses are in place. There's a bunch of Solar Collectors to prevent any going around anything else. They can't go... Th they have to go through the Lotuses, and that's going to be hard to do. Scorchers and Ravagers coming in. The Ravagers are going to be a bit better equipped. That, those Levelers really were a good option. The Ravagers are pretty much there to tank the Felon Shots. Ravager Leveler would be the way to go, I'd say. However, we probably won't see that. Orphelius is going for a nice counterattack. A Stinger is coming in here. That is not the best place to put it. It is going to go down without spending too much money from Covert Magic, but still, that is going to go down, and that should have been a Lotus or two. Not a Stinger. Not at that point. A Stinger here, that would be great. A Stinger on this side of the map would be perfect. But a Stinger on the east side of the map, not much use. That is rather unfortunate, but that is how it goes. So, Oh, well. Anyway, Covert Magic... Actually, has a bit of an opening now. Orphelius has used up all the shield energy. There are no thugs coming in. A bunch of bandits are being built. And that is actually being a big thorn in Corporate Magic's side. But the shield ball is drained. Anything you come in here... This Scorcher come here and just tear it apart, really. Actually, that would be the best idea. Come in here, tear apart this felon, and... Well, okay, a few Scorchers. Not just one. One will just die. Dominatrix, however, is being built. This isn't a... This isn't really a time for Dominatrix. He needs more support. He needs, like a dozen support units to make that dominatrix live long enough to actually take the felon. I don't know if he's going to get that though. I doubt he's going to. This this dominatrix is not going to work out. This bandit attack on the south is going to deal with everything. Dominatrix is coming in here. It's going to try. It's almost got it. No, never mind. That was almost got the thug. It was, it was not even a quarter way through the felon. Never mind. What am I saying? Almost had the thug though. That would have been something, but the bandit's coming in here, and this bandit attack, that's going to do it. Cover Magic throws in the towel, and that is game. So that is going to be the first game of tonight. I'll have another game for you guys shortly. It's going to be between two players. Exist and Silent Shadow. Okay, I've not heard of either of these players, but... I, well, when we get into the game, I'll show... Well, actually, I won't show why, but... This looks like it might be interesting. I kind of want to have more games with newer, unknown players. So, to that end, Exist and Silent Shadow is up next on Iced Coffee. I don't know if anyone knows who they are. But, if you do, please let me know. Because that'd be cool if I knew more about these players. I could talk about that and make nice color commentary. So, I will be back shortly with that. Stay tuned.